Hey there toy collector friends and Star Trek fans alike. Welcome back to the channel. I'm the time traveling toy collector and this is the XL edition La Sirena uh, from the Star Trek Picard um, TV series. This is actually the hero ship from Star Trek Picard. Um, it's a very different sort of ship to any of the previous iterations of hero ships we've had uh, on Star Trek series. Most notably, um, because, our, let's be honest, it's not a Starfleet vessel. It's actually a, a space freighter. Looks a bit of a funny shape for a space freighter, I must admit. But nevertheless, it is a space freighter rather than a, 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 star, a Starfleet starship. Um, and we are a little way into Star Trek's future history. Uh, not done uh, anything prior to this ship for Star Trek Picard. Um, any more than I have done for um, Discovery, apart from the USS Enterprise as it appears in Discovery. Um, but thought I would do this one because it seems to have split opinion with both with collectors and also with Star Trek fans. Um, it isn't uh, the norm, as I've just mentioned, in terms of a hero ship. It's very different. It's a very, very different design and a very, very different style. Um, something I find very interesting, which I, I'll pick up on a little bit uh, uh, on the fullness of time, is there's a little bit of uh, similarity in a part of the design which foreshadows perhaps something that crops up in uh, season three slash season four of um, Star Trek Discovery. Um, but I'm just doing a little, a very slow manual turnaround there so you can get to see uh, all the dimensions of the ship. Because again, this is a very very hefty version of La Serena. Um, it's, it's not small. I'll, I mean, I'll, I'm going to pick it up. You can see it, it takes both hands. It's in its display case. It, uh, it's on its display stand, but you can see that's. It is a hefty ship. It's not. This is not a small um, XL edition. This is a very hefty XL edition. Um, it has a real really different kind of vibrant it's I, I almost usually when you're looking at star trek uh, star trek starships you kind of have a formulaic way of looking at them because they are in many ways formulaic they have they have a classic line a classic look it's something that is is almost iconic in terms of it being in the in the psyche of of the nation um the la serena from uh, star trek picard very much sort of flies in the face of that. It's a very, very different design of ship. Um, and it also, it, it, it's, it doesn't hide from that. You know, the, the color scheme, from the minute you're looking at this, you're like, goodness gracious me, this is a very, very different kind of ship. So again, if I'm gonna tilt it slightly, I'm trying to stop it from falling out of the case, but you can have a look there at the, the sort of engine systems and the, the, the nacelles that you can see um, pulled out there with the, elements of the blue plastic and the, and the blue resin and die cast that go into making these ships, um, generally speaking, as, as sturdy and as robust as they are. Um, the, the panel detailing, as is always the case with Hero Collector, um, is really excellent. And you can see some really cool surface details. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna pick it up and show you much closer in a minute, but you can see like there's a, what appears to be like a la a, a, an exterior ladder here um, which sets the scale quite significantly. Um, you can see these um, outlying window sections. Uh, bear in mind it's a freighter rather than a, uh, a starship um, of a you know, particular galaxy class, etc. These front sections um, protrude quite significantly. I think I saw, um, I think it's on one of the Irish Trekkies um, YouTube videos. They, they comment on the fact that it's a bit reminiscent, forgive me if it's not that channel, um, but it's a bit reminiscent of the Vulcan shuttle as it appears in the motion picture, the Star Trek motion picture, in terms of how that, that long front section, the bit of a body, and I can, I can really see, I can really see what's meant by that because it, it does, it certainly does have that design element. The, the element that I was interested in, and, and I said maybe foreshadows a bit of um, the discovery season three and four is is where we have these nacelles on either side obviously they're attached to the main body and this is you know so warning spoilers ahead for discovery seasons three and four 
But where that takes place or aspects of that story takes place in, let's say, another future, a uh, Star Trek future, um, nacelles are, let's say, slightly less attached to the main ships um, as, as they are in, in the future of Star Trek Picard. But this is quite sort of reminiscent of them being um, away from the body. And I really like the way that that, that appears on this ship. It, does, it actually does look like it's not attached. Um, and I know Hero Collector are currently about to release, um, at the time of recording this, they're about to release some of the, the 31st century ships with detached nacelles. Um, and I think they're doing that with some clear plastic clips. To be honest, I think this, if they could have made this work a little bit more or develop this, I think this works better. This this almost looks to me like they're, I mean, I know they're not detached, obviously, but um, from an effect point of view, um, I think that I'm worried, I'm a bit worried. I'm jumping ahead from to videos that are yet to be recorded, but I'm a bit worried that it's going to not be quite as effective with plastic clips. But anyway, um, so here we have the cockpit section and there's there's perhaps some air intake valves there. Um, I don't think you can see it there, tucked away appears to be the, uh, the landing gear that's, that's tucked away either side of the main body. Uh, we have the cockpit here. Uh, so it arguably what would be the standard bridge um, is, is formed around this area here. But I, I call it a cockpit, I shouldn't really, but it just has a sense of being a cockpit. It's a bit more of that kind of ship. I, I, it just feels a bit sort of buccaneery in its design and colour scheme. Um, it, it almost looks like something out of Battlestar Galactica rather than um, a Star Trek hero ship. But there we are. Um, Let's come in a little bit closer and uh, take a look at the, the rear section. So as I pointed out uh, at one of those other rotations, you can see here where we've got the blue detailing on the thrusts uh, and around the, the nacelles. Um, and again, you can see some landing gear tucked away. And that's a neat, that's a neat touch because obviously it doesn't deploy because these, these, these models aren't toys. They aren't, they don't have special features as it were. So it could quite easily, these, these would never have been as detailed as they are. But uh, Hero Collector do, again, a sterling job of making sure that they do as much detail as they can. And as again, in a second, I'll pick this up so we can have a really close, a really close look at it. But I think, um, I think this is a really lovely ship. And I'll be honest, I was somebody that was not inclined to pick this model up because it didn't comply with my my understanding of a starship, of a hero starship from a Star Trek series. Um, it wasn't um, a Federation vessel. It doesn't have Federation traits. It's almost like picking up one of the random starships that appeared in an episode of something uh, once and got turned into one of the smaller models. Obviously, it isn't that. It's on a great scale, and it's really, really well done. Uh, the level of the detailing, even down to the design, uh, the, the small touches of the panel lining, um, uh, the, the detailing of the of the sort of hot rod, uh, reddish orange, burnt uh, burnt rust colour paint job that that, uh, that it's been given, um, is is really really effective. You know, I, I think it's really excellent here. And again, you can you can see all of that inlaid detailing here along these sections, um, which if it I'm not sure if you can see it as well on the on the camera, but that's that's laid in blue as well. Anyway, I'm now going to take it out of its um, case uh, of its stand so we can have a little bit of an in-hand look. And it's not light. This is a heavy piece. You can really feel you can't always feel die cast in some of the models. I know they always say they've got die cast in them. And I'm not going to accuse them of not having so. Um, but you can't always feel it. I would say in this one, you can definitely feel the weight of the die cast in this model. So let's get up close. And in fact, I'm going to move that out of the way because it's it got quite some lengthy elements to it. I don't want to send things crashing away. So we can see here um, just how good the detailing is around this, around this bridge area, um, even down to... Uh, we have the little ports here, the side windows. It's it's a really impressive piece um, of crafting uh, and, and modelling. And you can see all of the surface detail 
um, the wiring, the panels, as we've mentioned before, the, the, the inlaid window sections. This, I, I, I love the touch here, let's get it into shot, um, of that kind of what looks like an exterior climbing element, you know, or that, I'd like to call it a ladder, but uh, maybe it's not called a ladder in the, you know, 23rd century. Um, the detailing next to the nacelles, there's almost a sense here, and I think someone else has mentioned this already, it feels like these should deploy, so either they fold into the ship or they deploy out further from the ship. It just it just feels like there's a there's an action there waiting to happen. Um, I don't believe that it occurs in season one of Picard. We may see it happen in season two, if we even see the ship in season two. Who knows what season two will hold for us. Um, here's some up close um, look at the detailing around the, the engine section and the drive section. You can see lots of detailing there. Almost looks like a bit of an angry face. Um, but you've got a, you've got the engines there, and and that blue detailing is really really lovely, and it really pops against the the um, sort of dark grey, practically black rear section. These these th you've got these sections popping out here, um, possibly for aerodynamic um, warp flight, uh, what have you. But uh, there's still that element of despite the heft and the weight behind the ship of which it is significant. There is still that sense, very much that sense, that it has some fragil fragility. So for all that it's quite a robust ship, and I think, to be perfectly honest, it feels like one of the most most robust in the Star Trek range that I've, I've got my hands on. Um, and I mean, this is, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's got weight all the way through it, particularly here. Um, but even these are not as vulnerable as they appear to be. However, that said, I'm mindful of these sections here and here and here, and I wouldn't want to risk it with these sections because, you know, I'm, I'm just, in, in the interest of transparency, you can feel a difference in terms of how solid this is next to this section and this section. So arguably, I would say, uh, keep it on its display stand and keep it well uh, secured when you're displaying it. Let's take a look at the underside. And again, you can see there's panel work, some quite extensive panel work and detailing um, in play there. You can see here, as we mentioned earlier, that you do have the, the landing gear there and there, uh, which is a nice little touch. Again, considering it won't actually deploy, it's, it would have been easy to, to sort of hodge that. Um, again, there's a sense that there's a hinge uh, or on the actual working model, there'd be a, a hinge there and there uh, around those side nacelles. But I don't know, maybe that's a, a feature for the future, as it were. Um, but this is, yeah, again, really hefty, really lovely. Do Again, there's a couple of bits here that I don't think it would take an awful lot to, to destabilise. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, again, I, I'm quite... I'm quite aware that some members of the... You can see how hefty it is. It sits across both my hands. That is that is not a small ship. So if you are considering getting this, um, be mindful, it does take up a lot of space. Um, it is not a small ship by any means. So let me just get this back in play and then line this back up. Of course, obviously, one of the things I loathe about these is my... Uh, fear of drop. There we go. Actually, that was much easier. And, uh, there is a there's there is a weight to. I know the center of gravity is very important with these um, these stands, but there is a a sense that as you put it in, it's there. It does lean to a little, and you do think, oh, it's gonna. It's not gonna withstand the um, the gravitational pull of the front of the, of the front of the ship. Um, but it clearly does. It stands up all by itself. Marvelous. Uh, I personally love it. Um, again, it wasn't something that was originally on my radar to get, uh, but mostly because of my own sort of unconscious bias towards Federation starships looking like Federation starships, and this isn't a Federation starship, so it's almost a sort of starship of the week guest appearance. But of course, it isn't. It is. It is one. It's the key hero ship for Star Trek Picard season one, and. Again, I think there was a special offer of some description that Hero Collector were running. No surprise there. And no surprise here. Uh, I saw it and thought, well, what a wonderful opportunity to get this for a 
a bit of a steal on their website and it, it really was because believe me uh, I'm quite tight when it comes to buying things that can take up space um, again lovely I will just add that it comes with as ever a, a Starships uh, collection magazine which uh, shows that it's a special edition um, gives us uh, a little bit of a breakdown around what it is it's a Kaplan F-17 cruiser it's got uh, some lovely shots of the of the ship from the series information about how to get the stand to work just make sure that I don't knock it over when I'm getting hyper excited about the magazine um, and what can I show you from inside the magazine I don't know uh, some concept art everyone loves a bit of concept art um, and I guess if you don't love the concept art, then you know you don't need to worry about it. You've got the you've got the mat, you've got the model itself. So in fairness, you know uh, you 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 are getting the main the main event. If however some behind the scenes concept art and some background information uh, appeals to you, there's some in interesting early renders there, and then the final appearance of, of or the final design. Uh, then uh, so much better value it is because it's a it's a great little magazine. It's full color. It's glossy. Uh, it's very very nice. So yeah, for for my money, it's a it's a nice little bonus to have on board. Um, I also say I can't bring it into shop for this video um, just because it's quite hefty. But this was the XL La Serena, not uh, the standard um, one from the Picard range, and the box is very very classy um usually i think you've seen some of them before it's the blue boxes very very straightforward um this one was very very classy it had a range of hero ships on the side on the on the front artwork it had a, a slightly sort of magnetic lid and it was instead of the, the polystyrene it was a black black foam interior um, I'm just I'm, I'm just working out if I can actually bring it in for you to see because um, it would be lovely. I'm going to just move the ship to one side um, temporarily uh, and hope to goodness I don't send it flying just so that I can see if I can uh, can show you the uh, the box itself. So here is the box that uh, La Serena comes in uh, from Star Trek Picard. Uh, again, lovely artwork, but you can see here the hero ships as they appear in the artwork on the side and down the side there. Um, I'm trying to keep it all in and all in focus. And this is what I mean about the almost magnetic end point to get in. You lift this flap up. Um, it's a beautiful box, opens up like this. Um, and instead of the usual, we've got some lovely black foam and it was inlaid into here, um, as opposed to what we normally get, um, which is the white polystyrene uh, inserts. But this is, I think this is a really, this is a step up. Even the box itself is, is a, you know, a presentation piece that I'd have no issues uh, displaying somewhere along the line. So just wanted to say that because um, I know some people are very interested in the packaging of what they're purchasing and quite rightly because you do want to know it's going to arrive safely um so it's a little bit of a departure from what we're used to in terms of uh, in terms of uh, star trek starships so anyway i just wanted to give you a little tour of this of this model hopefully it's uh, given you some insight as to whether or not it belongs in your collection if it does um, great. If it doesn't, I'm happy to have helped you come to that conclusion or reinforce that conclusion if you'd already come to it. Um, if it's been useful, do hit the like button. It's very much appreciated. Similarly, whilst you're doing that, why not subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and you'll never miss a future exploration of a Star Trek starship or Starbase or a Transformer toy or whatever it is that we might be looking at in an upcoming video. Um, you have been a wonderful audience. I have been the time traveling toy collector and this has been La Serena, the hero ship from Star Trek Picard season one. Thank you for joining me for the last 20 minutes or so. You've been fantastic and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. 
In the meantime, do please remember that a thing of beauty truly is a toy forever. Take care. Bye-bye for now.